Hello, it's Jacob, and today I'm trying Outback Steakhouse. I'm his brother, and I'm also trying Outback Steakhouse tonight. We actually brought our triplet along with us today. I'm the triplet. <laughs> My name's Ethan, and I'm here to go eat Outback Steakhouse. Whoa. We just knew we had to bring Ethan along since he's a steak boy. This is a worldwide chain, but I have never been. It's kind of shocking because they're everywhere, but somehow I've missed it my whole life. Yeah, I've never been here either. This is going to be my first time eating here. and I actually have been here once, probably around 2014, and I actually went with my sexual romantic Australian partner. I went there with an actual Australian the whole theme is Australia. I heard that some people in Australia walk around barefoot just around the city. So I was gonna go in barefoot, but in America, some places say no shoes, no short, no service, and I wanted service, so I put back on my shoes. Do you ever see people barefoot in Australia when you go? I did see people at the grocery store barefoot, but I think that was because it was by the beach. And we think we're free in America. We don't even have the freedom to go barefoot to the gosh dang grocery store. Ch like. The bathrooms actually were a little bit Australia themed. It wasn't a men's bathroom, it was for blokes. Also in the bathrooms, they had they had a whole room just for the sinks and a whole room <laughs> just for the like the toilets and the urinals and stuff. Smack dab on the top of the beginning of the menu, it says, no rules, just right. That's Outback Steakhouse's slogan. Oh yeah, that doesn't <laughs> even need to be a right or wrong because it's gonna be right. No matter what. They have a whole entire page for alcoholic drinks. If you look at the names, they have little cute names like Pina Koala. I'm assuming there's no difference between that and like a normal Pina Colada, but that's fun that they made it like Australian themed. It should be noted that one of the advertisers is Sydney Shrooms. Just put that in your notes. Like They have a whole entire page for the steaks, and every single picture of the like actual meat is raw, which I really loved. I love steak. I told y'all he was a steak boy. More down under faves, because don't people refer to Australia as down under? <laughs> down under on the globe. Just want to explain that joke to everyone. <laughs> You might have already known this if you've been to Outback Steakhouse, but I was actually under the impression that it was like actually Australia food. Food authentic to Australia. But I guess it just is American food and the restaurant is just themed like Australia and the, f and the names of the food have Australian themes. Yeah, Americans made this. Specifically, Florida Americans made this restaurant. <laughs> Apparently from a few things I read, it was made by four people and none of them had ever been to Australia. And the whole thing thing was like, we want it to be a restaurant of like what American stereotype is to Australians to be like. I like that. They were just like, we want to make a restaurant about another country, but not do any research into the other country and just pretty much just be American food, but a little bit of a theme. I get it. Having a theme is always fun. Mm hmm. I agree. I also thought that it was actually Australian food though. Cause like I said, I went with them, um, my Australian sexual romantic partner and i remember he even said yeah blooming onions aren't even a thing in australia and i remember just thinking yeah they are even though he was from australia i just didn't take his word over it because i was like there it's just an australian thing but you just don't know it so i was hypnotized by the outback steakhouse menu. <laughs> When the waitress, she came out with a big old piece of bread with some butter, I thought Australians never ate bread. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we had to dig into that bread. I do like how they made you cut it. It just makes it more fun. Yeah, and it was just typical like brown bread. It's always fun having a slice, mm. and it gets your stomach ready for like the 5,000 calorie meal you're gonna consume. I'm just gonna assume they add like stomach stomach openers in this bread. Like you mm. take a bite of this bread and somehow it widens your stomach to be able to consume like 800 more calories without throwing up. They're just playing American TV. Uh, They're also playing American music. No, they should have took the theme full though in my opinion. If you're gonna do an Australian themed restaurant that doesn't actually have Australian food, you need to make it more corny. Like I want the waitresses and waiters to be go up to the table and say, hey, I don't even know how to do an Australian accent, but just like do a fake Australian accent, please. Oh yeah, they actually never even referred to us as mates once. So the waiter brought out this like plate that was above the table that said on another level. And we were both like, wait. But a few minutes later, they brought out the iconic signature fake Australian dish, the bloomin' onion. It's a fried whole onion with like this mayonnaise dip. <laughs> and then that wasn't enough for us. So we also got Coca-Bora wings. 
We got the hot version. I asked the waitress and said, so what is kookaburra? And she said, mm, let me ask my boss. I don't really know. <laughs> and then I said, well, what I'm really asking is, is it chicken wings or is kookaburra like an Australian animal? <laughs> she laughed right at my face and said, you stupid little boy. It's chicken wings. Just kookaburra is a little spices, you know? Is kookaburra actually Australian or something? I don't know what it is, but I was just scared there was a little creature called a kookaburra and I wasn't prepared to eat the little bits of it. You know, I mean, I actually would have eaten it, but I just wanted to be mentally prepared before. Oh! <laughs> it's a bird that's native native to Australia. Were we eating that little bird? <laughs> oh, no, I hope not. Yeah, all I know is would it tasted good, and that would be kind of gross if it was a bird. Well, chicken uh. is a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. These wings, I gotta say, were kind of upper echelon. They tasted like spicy chicken ramen noodle flavored, in my opinion. Really yummy. You actually didn't even need ranch. We got ranch, but you didn't need it. To me, they tasted like the Fritos NASCAR version. I don't know if anyone else had those back in the day. It tasted exactly like that. And the Bloomin' Onion. So I've had it at Texas Roadhouse. Well, okay, nonetheless, it was the best Bloomin' Onion I've had. Something about it was so good. And after three bites of it, you were done. Because it's so salty and so greasy that for me, I was just kind of over after three bites. But for those three bites, I was on the opposite of hell, heaven. I grabbed a little piece of it, dipped in whatever sauce they had. I don't know whatever sauce it was, but it was good. Oh boy, it was good. <laughs> I liked it too. But I feel like I didn't like it as much as you guys. <laughs> but I did enjoy it, but I didn't think like, ooh. It was the same as Texas Roadhouse to me. I feel like you guys, just since we were in there, you wanted to be friends with Outback Steakhouse when it was just the same. No, it, I. this isn't, I just know it's definitely butter. And it's more light. I'm joking, it isn't, it isn't, but it is butter than Texas Girl House. Since we were at a restaurant, you know I had to go to my signature restaurant drink, a Shirley Temple. Those are just so good, I always have to get it every single time I go to a restaurant. But you know, these two just basic boys, they're just gonna get a Diet Coke when they go to a restaurant, but you have that at home. You need to go all out and go for a Shirley Temple. You guys need to do that next time. Wait, that's a good point. You do just have Diet Coke at home. I don't have Shirley Temples at home, but I have Diet Coke at home, so why don't I just get a Shirley Temple? Like, why would I get a Diet Coke? I actually just changed my whole mindset. Like, why am I choosing to live a not exuberant life? All of us ordered our mains, and with all of the mains we got, you get two sides. The waitress that we had, I could just tell she was so nice. And this is proof that she was so nice. We ordered our items, and this is what it says at the top. You get a baked potato in your choice of one side. Ethan ordered first, and he was like, okay, so I get a baked potato, and then I get to pick one side. And she said, you can pick two sides. So technically, she kind of cheated the menu for us, which is icon behavior didn't make any of us get a potato. She kind of knew that none of us wanted a potato. None of us ended up picking that as one of our sides. A potato so boring. Even a loaded baked potato, in my opinion, it's never loaded enough. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, so the reason why I mentioned that is because we all got our salads that we ordered for one of the sides. Me and Lucas got Caesar, and Lucas got, you know, and Ethan got a... Uh, Dowden salad? House salad. Yep. House, house salad. salad. You have to get a salad so you have something to do while you're waiting for your actual food to come out. Oh, I'm so happy they brought it out like before the entree so yeah you didn't have to just dilly dally fantasizing about the food you actually had something to distract yourself it's all a distraction because i'm pretty sure a philosopher like a psychologist said a wandering human mind is a miserable mind Wait, I believe that. Basically the Caesar salad, but it has tomatoes. And I got my own dressing, so I got ranch. You know, typical. <laughs> and it was really good. The Caesar salad was great. I was very excited to try the croutons because I saw a little poster on the side of the wall about how the croutons were special or something. It was so far away, I didn't know what it said underneath, but I just knew the croutons were something special. To be honest, they just tasted like regular croutons, but I do like how they are something. Something's different about them, I don't know what. And I love how it always has Parmesan and cheese so good. And like Lucas said, the croutons weren't like anything too crazy, but I love how they like made up that they were like homemade or something. It's kind of cool that they mm. made. I love when people make up stuff. Even though they were great value. Yeah. But that's fine. I like a good story. Okay, I got a salad and then a soup for my side and she brought out the soup because you know how like soups are also a pre thing? If you're really hungry, get a soup and a salad as the two sides so then you can munch right away. Oh, that's true. You don't need to wait for your other side. I'm pretty sure they came out within three minutes and 30 seconds of ordering. 
Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I got Tasmanian chili because <laughs> I'll explain why it's why that's Australian themed. It's Australian themed because there's an animal called the Tasmanian devil, which who picked that name because like although like I actually don't believe like there's a devil, but like something about an animal being named the Tasmanian devil is just like so scary. Is it Tasmanian? Tasmanian. Tasmanian. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been mispronouncing it, but that's just scary to me. But the whole reason why it was called the Tasmanian soup. The chili is because it's spicy and like oh, yeah. devil's probably spicy if you ate him. I do remember our first computer we ever had when I was like five years old. There was a little video encyclopedia on it and it showed a video of a Tasmanian devil. I remember actually being so scared of it because like it would make this scary ass noise in the video like Rah! and then like also it was called a devil. Like I think me and my older sister used to play it and then like run upstairs. I honestly didn't know it was a real animal until like a few years ago. I always thought it was just fake. I've never seen one in real life. You didn't see one roaming around Australia when I never you went? went to Tasmania. It's like an island, I'm pretty sure. Mm. This chili was good. To be honest, it wasn't that spicy, so they kind of hyped it up in my mind a little bit. Cool, because usually with chili, it just is ground beef, but this was like a, a cut of beef. I don't know what cut, but yeah, it was like beef chunks. It wasn't ground beef. Everyone tried it. We yeah. all did. It tasted like um the chili on top of a chili cheese dog at Dairy Queen. That's what, that's what exactly what it tastes like to me. Yeah, once he pointed that out, that's the exact taste of it. It felt elevated still, which does count towards something. I want to mention this because um it's an interesting find. I've done several videos going to restaurants, and I always browse the Wikipedia to learn stuff about it, and so many restaurants have a controversy tab. A yeah. scandal. Outback Steakhouse doesn't have a controversy tab on Wikipedia, and that's surprising because if it's a chain restaurant, there has to be some controversy, but... I get there's not according to Wikipedia. This is a new item, so you might not know about it because it's very new. It's the filet shiola. Yeah, it's two pieces of like steak with like mushrooms and cheese and like fried carrots on top. For my main entree, I got the. It's also a new item. It's called the sirloin and bloomin' chicken. I got my steak medium rare. I got the six ounce of the Victoria's filet mignon. I also got it medium rare, and I got mashed potatoes as my side. So I was the one out I got well done and I'm not grossed out, grossed out by medium real steak but this is the reasoning if anyone wanted to know a few weeks ago I had a burger that was kind of red in the middle and the next day I was sick my stomach hurt and something happened on my lower region of the body I'm just gonna assume I felt sick the next day because of the burger so I needed time to rest from raw meats in two weeks I'll probably recover from that mindset it was good the mushrooms like I think provolone cheese on top in my mind the shredded uh, fried carrots won't need it it's like Okay, I would just remove that from the menu item, but other than that, it was good. I always thought chain restaurants had like shitty steak, I would just assume, but to me it was good. My filet mignon was really good. Really juicy, and I think it might have been the fanciest cut on the menu, just because it was kind of the most pricey. What about the mashed potatoes? I'm curious, because I didn't try them. Um, the mashed potatoes were just basic mashed potatoes. Nothing to scream about at the top of your lungs or freak out or write a review, but they were good. They were just good old pleasant taters. You know, Ethan had like a bloomin' chicken thing, and I thought bloomin' it was kind of look like a flower because the onion kind of looks like a flower, but I guess bloomin' chicken just means fried chicken, right? I don't know for sure but i think it might mean like the sauce was on top because it was like a there was a bloom it was like the same sauce as a blooming onion oh yeah Wait, so are you guys telling me that it wasn't cut up like the onion because i'm not kidding in my memory I, uh, I pictured it all cut up in this certain way was it not no it was just like a little flat piece of chicken oh my god you're living on la la land again yeah, where are you i just made that up in my mind i guess but the steak it was really juicy i tried a little bit of lucas's filet mignon and it was for sure a little bit better but mine was a little bit chewy but it was it was like really good and then i tried the chicken um i'm gonna be honest it wasn't that good it was nothing to be raving about probably want to get that chicken again just because um it was a little bit like i had so much fried food from like the onion and all that <laughs> <laughs> so like i was a little bit tired of the chicken not that good of fries ethan was right though since we had had so much fried food in our system i tried one of ethan's fries and i actually my body started to shut down a little bit my body immediately told my brain you can't have any more of this stuff because once you have too much fried stuff you just there's a limit it, I guess. If it's Australian themed, why are the fries called fries? Why aren't they called chips? I feel like that's just a case of them not trusting the consumer's intelligence. Yeah, I think it is too. I was thinking the same thing. I know, because they knew yeah. if they called it chips, they're like, 
what? I don't know, fries. And they would say, well, in Australia, they call it chips. And they say, what about chips? You know, it's like they didn't want to have to do that whole song and dance each time. When we were driving to Outback Steakhouse, I was telling them about a few menu items because I was like, do my resource today. And I was like, there's a Tim Tam Sunday, which like Tim Tams are actually Australian. So like some of it is kind of Australian. So yeah, then it came time. Like this in real time now. It was dessert time. And I remember asking um, Ethan and Lucas, it should we get the Tim Tam Sunday? And Ethan said, I mean, if you got it, it would just be for the video. And I was thinking like, let's not even get it. Lucas was being all weird, saying I want it and I don't want it. Can you please be honest right now? Did you actually want it or did you not want it? Because I'm still so confused. Like he kept saying like, let's get it. And he said, nah, you don't want it. So like, what was happening? I was so confused. So basically, like I said, I got to the fried food limit. And I don't know if this is just me, but when my body gets to the fried food limit and it starts to shut down, the only thing to save my life is some sweetness. I needed some sweetness to take the sodium levels down. And everyone knows, I don't know if this is a science or if it's bro science or whatever, but <laughs> if you have too much sodium in your system, you need a sweet and it lowers down your sodium level. <laughs> I don't care if science doesn't prove that, but that is official bro science. I know, science. and you also told us it was a Sunday, by the way, which it ended up not being. Oh yeah, it was like some fudge brownie thing. Tim Tams crushed on top. We've all had Tim Tams because um, Lucas is sexual partner sometimes eats them and we've had them. It was thick. It was of course good, but after three bites bro science is concluded. Like the sodium levels go back to normal flat line yeah, level. it was so rich, but I loved it. I know it's like one of those like things where it's like actually like so thick. <laughs> Literally. Oh. You take a bite and like you're basically like Whoa. That everybody else in the room is so uncomfortable. Can we all admit that watching the video footage of it, you want another bite right now? Why didn't we take it to go? Actually, it does look good. The reason why I personally stopped myself is back to the bro science. I knew if I had one more bite, it would have switched over and I need to start eating salty stuff again. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I didn't want to be in that limbo all night. So I cut myself off before the other hatch got released. As you can tell, like, we kind of munched down a lot of stuff, but there was a few leftovers. So we put it in a to-go box, shoved it all in, and honestly, I don't know who's gonna eat this, but I'm gonna bring it to the house of our gigantic family, and I hope someone consumes this. I know, like, somebody is gonna open up this box, and they're gonna see the contents inside, and be mesmerized and so excited. This came to $142 exactly on the spot, which is kind of funny. We were kind of thinking while we were there looking at the menu prices, Outback Steakhouse, just from the prices alone, is a step up from like Applebee's and stuff. Prices are a little bit steeper than your regular run-of-the-mill chain. I actually do think Outback Steakhouse is better than like Applebee's and all those other chain restaurants. Maybe we went to a good location, but those, these are my feelings. Um, Outback Steakhouse is basically reminds me of Texas Roadhouse. Everything's sort it tastes like Texas Roadhouse. Probably the exact same menu, <laughs> just different theme. Probably. Ellie Golden's the perfect ending to that. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Ba 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 ba. ba, 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 ba. ba.